Hey, welcome to today's makeup stream. Um, just a qu few quick announcements. Uh, a reminder that over on my Instagram, uh, at justwondering.brad, uh, we're, we're going to run a giveaway when I reach 500 followers. So go over there, follow, um, like some things. And uh, when I hit 500 followers, I'll be uh, doing a giveaway. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, welcome to today's stream. Um, we're going to be tying the Black Doctor from uh, Price Tanit. And uh, yeah, today's stream is to make up for the fact that I was unable to make the Maryland fly fishing and collectible tackle show yesterday. Um, there was a, a very untimely death in uh, in my close family and I had to attend the funeral and I was traveling all day yesterday. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, it just wasn't able to make the show. Uh, so today what we're doing is like I said, tying the fly. Uh, we're going to chat a little bit. Um, like my usual streams, I'm going to do the first half. I'm going to do the body this week, and then I'm going to do the wing next week. Um, you know, and talk a little bit about the fly, talk a little bit about the techniques, and uh, yeah, let's get started. So I've already started the underbody. I've got the gut eye tied in, and I've got two layers on the underbody. I got. I want to do one more um, uh, for this fly. Uh, this is a two eye, I believe, um, Gaelic Supreme blind eye. They're kind of the best, well, they're kind of the only budget blind eye game out there. Um, you know, you can find some partridges and some, uh, like Alec Jackson spays, but those are, I feel like they're harder to come by. And, uh, I, I, I have to check with the uh, partridge rep, but I think they're trying to phase out like the CS six, um, and that sort of thing. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so this is a Gaelic Supreme and not a Partridge Hook. Um, yeah. So I'm just finishing up the uh, underbody. Uh, and uh, because of the size of this hook, I'm only going to do three layers. So, and by three layers, I mean, actually means six. So three passes. So I went down and back once, down and back twice. And now I'm going to go down and back a third time. Um, each time I make it, a, you know, I stop a little bit shorter uh, where the tag is going to be tied in, and that's so that the tag is a nice uh, um, taper to it. Uh, the underbody is fairly important uh, on, on the Black Doctor um, and any other fly that has a, a floss body because how smooth the underbody is determines how smooth the floss body or at least it'll be it'll be a lot more apparent with a floss buddy whether you had a smooth underbody or not um and by smooth i don't mean like you know the so this um i'm using unistretch and unistretch is not a particularly fine uh 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 you know it, what am I trying to say? Unistretch is made up of many smaller threads and fibers, and those threads and fibers aren't particularly fine. Um, so when you put it on, you can definitely see that the the body or the underbody has some texture, um, and that's okay uh, because um, what's actually important is whether the you know the tapers are smooth, whether there are lumps or bumps. Uh, obvious lumps or bumps in the underbody because uh, those will come through uh, the floss when you lay it down on top. Uh, it's less important how fine grained your underbody material. So something like the Vivas Viva, thread, um, that's quite fine grained. It does end up with a very smooth underbody, but you know, the, the unistretch does just fine. Um, and I think in some way, in, in some ways, the unistretch is a, a better underbody building thread. Uh, I think the, the Vivas thread builds up nicely. And like I said, it produces a very, very fine, very smooth underbody, but um, it can be a little bit slippery if you're trying to tie materials directly on top of it with another mono-based 
uh, thread. So like, um, for example, I use ultra thread to tie on uh, for most of my tying. And that against the Vivas thread uh, is a very slippery combination. And so it can make tying uh, other materials directly onto the underbody somewhat more difficult. Okay, so this underbody is done or is, is, is completely wrapped. Just gonna whip finish it here. And as you can see, um, you know, I stopped well short of the uh, of the eye here because I don't want to put too much uh, um, uh, bulk on top of the hook here because uh, we'll need that for the wing. All right, um, and then like usual, uh, like I mentioned before, in order to find where I want the tag to start, I kind of use my bobbin as like a plumb line, and uh, I find where the point of the hook starts. So the tip in the tag should uh, should um, occupy the space equivalent to the or the length of the body that is equivalent to the space of the point of the hook to the the end the the barb the end of the barb the pointy end of the barb so i'll start my thread and you know just to help smooth out that underbody because it is slightly grainy um just gonna wrap now i could smooth out the underbody um and i think i will have to close to the head but this tag session turned out okay and you know with um even with using silk floss or, or you know tying thread you can fill in a little bit of that graininess uh just uh using um another flat uh tying uh thread um all right so the tip is fine silver uh oval tinsel i'm gonna actually gonna use medium oval uh just because of the size of the hook and then also the size of the the uh tinsel that i'm using for the body to do the rib for the body uh which is actually going to be fairly robust uh antique silver oval that i really enjoy using uh so I'm, I'm using medium tinsel. Uh, that's one of the things you read on in the recipes. It says, you know, fine or extra fine oval tinsel. But you have to remember that they're tying these flies on a much smaller hook than we tie them today. So this is a two aught. They would have been tying them down to size, you know, eight even. And so when you get to that small of a size, extra fine makes sense. When you're tying on a two aught hook, extra fine does. Um, you, usually does not make sense uh, or or it becomes difficult to even like see on the hook just going to wrap As always, I'm, I'm flattening my thread as I go. And I'm always wanting to tie things, you know, either directly on the top or the bottom or towards the back side of the hook. Uh, that reduces the bulk, the amount of bulk that you see built up. Um, and then I'm going to trim these tag ends a little bit short. Uh, and the reason for that is because this has a dubbed it has a butt. It's a dubbed red or scarlet wool butt. Um, and that allow that's a good place just to to you know trim the things for the, the tip and the tag because then you don't have the the bulk from the tip and the tag extending um, uh, down the the body or you don't have to account for it in the body. All right, so yellow floss for the tag. Mm. 
Just gonna use uh, some golden yellow. This is the JEC golden yellow uh, floss. Uh, and like I mentioned, uh, I think last week, I've started putting the the recipes, the descriptions for the recipes in the descriptions of the um, of the video. Uh, I, I I don't do that before I upload it or uh, before I stream just because of the way the um, the YouTube stream uh, interface works, but then I can go back afterwards and upload or uh, insert the the recipes in the description. So that's what I've been doing, and uh, that seems to work pretty well. Uh, so yeah, so now I'm just laying on the floss for the tag. Um, again, you want your floss to go on flat. Uh, if you want... Uh, now you could go back and burnish the floss. Um, I know that's kind of a popular thing to do. Uh, I don't like to do it um, because I like my floss to have a little bit of texture. Uh, I've talked about this before, but you know, kind of that super polished, glassy, smooth floss body really doesn't appeal to me. Uh, it used to. Um, I used to do some of that, but. Uh, these days, uh, just from a visual perspective, I want I want some texture, some graininess to the floss, uh, just to give it a little bit more, you know, motion. All right, so for the tail, then a topping and a. Uh, let's see, first the topping. Yeah. Hmm. I have some longer topping tails or crests, but nothing quite suited. Oof. So when you start looking at your toppings that you have for tails, this is where you have to make some decisions about what shape you want your wing to be or what or you know what style of fly you want to tie uh, so just to give you an example if i were tying this in a more what i would consider like a more antique style so something with a low wing where the the, the topping and the tail don't meet so usually when you think of like a like a hardy style salmon fly the topping and the tail meet right at the tip right at the tip of the wing um, in older sa style salmon flies, usually it was a flatter tail and the topping and, and tail didn't meet. Uh, you can see that in the, in the, the, um, like the prints and the, the, uh, uh, what do they call them? The, uh, plates of printed flies for like say blacker. Um, and so, like, if I were tying an older, like, a, if I wanted the fly to look more antique, I'd use a very flat tail, and it looks something like this. Um, but if uh, if I want the topping and the tail to meet, uh, then I would use a slightly more curved tail, and it'd look something like this. So that way, when I add the topping, uh, just for visual reference, when I add the topping, it'd be easy for it to just kind of... Uh, come up to meet. Um, I think uh, I think the style I'm going for is something along the lines of like, uh, you know, uh, Ron Alcock style, um, where the, you know, it's kind of, if you kind of zoom out, if you zoom out your eyes, the, the, the curve of the hook and the curve of the tail kind of make like a heart shape. Um, I think I might try to go for something like that. Uh, 
And all I'm doing is I'm pulling back the the barbs that I, I want to trim and then keeping the ones in the middle for the ones that I am going to tie on. And uh, my, again, my technique is to trim the, the unwanted barbs at the tail of, of this crest feather um, down to stubble and then use that stubble to help uh, hold the feather in place as I tie it on. All right, so I tie, trim that down to, so it's just some stubble. Um, I am going to give it a quick flatten with my, so you can see that there's a little excess curve here in the tie-in area of this, of this um, crest. And so I'm gonna flatten that down a little bit just so it doesn't um, ride, you know, too high too quickly. Okay. Not quite straight, not quite on top. Okay. There you go. That's pretty good. Um, I'm going to pull this just a little bit. All right. I am, then I'm going to select, so there's an Indian Crow veiling. Uh, like usual, I'm gonna be using uh, Red Weaver as an Indian Crow substitute. Um, you know, and it's a pretty good substitute color-wise. It's not quite the right structure of the feather. Um, you can barely see that there, but uh, let's see. Get my... So yeah, so yeah, as you can see, it's a little bit... Um, a little bit webby. It doesn't quite have the right shape, but it's, it's pretty spot on for color. And... Um, to make it easier to tie in, I'm not going to trim any of the fluff because that again, like the like the stubble that holds on the tail, it keeps the the feather from rotating around the hook as I tie it on. Um, but I am going to just kind of wet it down so it goes from you know being kind of this downy feather to a slightly more streamlined package that I can tie on more easily. Just a little bit more. Just catch all of those fibers. And then I'm going to use my pliers to flatten out the stem. And I'm going to leave that curvature. Oop. So this feather you can see is, is quite curved. Has Man, small feather. Uh, has quite a bit of curvature to it. And I'm going to leave that because that will help it sit right along the tail. And uh, it's okay if it if it kind of like appears to spill off over the side um, a little bit. Uh, that's that's kind of a nice effect. You know, if it's not and it's not a fishing fly, so you know. It's okay. Nice. And then I'm gonna take ball of wax, just warm it up with my body heat and uh, use wax thread to secure everything before trimming the ends because I don't want anything to shift while trimming stems. OK. 
Okay, just a couple. Apologize if I keep bumping my microphone. I know I, I do it fairly frequently. Um, it's just because this headset uh, has the best microphone uh, that I have. And um, I do have some plans. Uh, I'm trying to build up some funds to purchase a nice microphone that I could hang like right here, uh, you know, off like one of those. Uh, um, uh, steady uh crane type things uh, i'm not entirely sure what you knew, what you call it um i'd like to get one of those just to you know have a higher quality mic that i can put and not have to wear these head this headset uh i'd also like to get a um a like a high def a high definition webcam that I can bring and put like right here in front of the fly so that you guys can get a closer view. Um, or I could, you know, swing it around and so you can get a view of what I see. Uh, I'd like to get, you know, one or two webcams that I can switch between uh, so that we can get kind of a full view of the, the fly as it's being tied, um, you know, but HD webcams and, and, uh, mics like that, you know, are, can be had for relatively, inex, you know, cheaply, but uh, they're not inexpensive. And so, um, you know, some, some longer, longer range goals for the stream uh, to help improve the quality. Uh, if you want to support the stream and contribute to those, uh, those goals of, for improving the stream, um, you can head over to my Etsy shop. Uh, that's the best way. Uh, Studio one two one three on Etsy. Uh, purchase a fly there, um, and all of that money will go back towards either you know buying more materials that I need uh, to continue tying flies uh, for these streams, or uh, go towards improving the technology um, of the uh, you know the camera and the mic and such. So now. Um, it does call for a red Berlin wool, but uh, however, I don't have any red Berlin wool. Um, so I am using, uh, sorry, Scarlet uh, specifically. Um, however, I'm using a uh, Scarlet mohair, which is a uh, rabbit. And, you know, for this size hook, uh, that's, that's perfectly appropriate. Okay. Yeah. And this doesn't have to be very bushy, so I'm just going to trim a few stray fibers. And yeah. There we go. Okay. Um, next, we'll, next to go on will be the rib. And for the rib, I'm going to be using this kind of very nice silver, medium silver, well, large silver oval tinsel. And it's a little bit hard to see in the camera there, but you can see how it's got like a striped effect. It's actually because the, 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 the silver, the flat silver tinsel is wrapped around a core, uh, like a, like a silk cord or, um, maybe cotton core, uh, but this particular tinsel was wrapped in such a way where the core shows through. So the tinsel was wrapped uh, kind of loosely around the core. Well, not loosely, but open, in an open manner around the core. Um, and so it's kind of this nice, uh, I guess, stripey or, um, patterned uh, oval tinsel look. And I am going to uh, tie this in. And this is going to be the only thing I'm going to tie in because I'm actually going to tie in the body hackle, which is a Claret uh, rooster hackle 
um, from the second rib, I'm actually going to use the bodies, the, the black silk that I use for the body uh, to tie that in. So um, just going to bind down the, the rib ribbing uh, with my tying thread. Now this is very fine 70, 70 denier ultra thread. So it does take a little bit while long. It does take a little while if you're trying to do an entire body, uh, and because there's nothing else in between uh, on a it's relatively simple body like this, it can take a little bit. As always, flattening my thread as I go, making sure that the rib stays or the the tail end of the rib stays to, to the back side of the body so that it doesn't create any bulk underneath. Now I just discovered that I can change the classification for these streams. So apparently these streams have been listed under people and blogs. Um, unfortunately, there's no arts and crafts or makers tag uh, or, or um, category. Uh, there are some, there are like sports, there's how to and lifestyle, I think is what it is, or how to and style. I don't really know what, you know, what category to put this in. Cause obviously I, I, I would prefer to be under like a making category. So like makers or, uh, projects, um, or like an outdoors tag. So like an outdoor gear or like a. Yeah, I just don't know what to 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 put this as for category. I guess people in blog for right now, since it's just mostly me talking um, about flies. Uh, but I did learn that I could change that, so I'm I'm gonna be looking into seeing how I can recategorize these these streams because people in blogs just doesn't seem quite correct uh, for the classification here. Um, yeah, I have some French black silk. Uh, this is just some leftovers from other projects. So I just want to make sure that it's all. Yeah. Yeah. Tie it on, get my thread out of the way, wind it on. Uh, before I wind it though, I am gonna pr prep my hackle. It is a claret hackle from, and I'm gonna, as usual, start it from the second turn of rib, which is approximately you know, a little less than a quarter of the way down the body. So, uh, uh, and I'm gonna pick from the smaller side of the the bag or the smaller bit because this is a size two out hook. This one looks promising. Yeah, I think this will be fine. So I'll strip away the extra fluff that I don't need. Pull out the barbs just so I can have an easier time of tying it in by the tip. And again, when I tie it on, I want to tie it uh, the dull or inside side, inside side or facing of the fly towards the body. Um, if you look at a hackle feather, it has uh, two sides. It's a little hard to see in the camera, but it has two sides. It has the outside shiny side. So that's the side that would be towards the outside of the bird. And then it has like a duller side, which usually is a little bit concaved in. That's the side that goes towards the bird. Uh, 
um, and you want to tie the hackle in, if you're going to tie it in by the tip, you want to tie it so the dull side is closest to the body of the hook. So that way when you wind it, the dull side is towards the back, the shiny side is out and visible to the viewer. All right. And floss again, trying to keep it as flat as possible. Uh, you'll notice I didn't, I don't wear silk gloves because you know, I don't. I'm not working with the super delicate silks. I mean, G J E C can be kind of delicate, but it's not, it's not that delicate. Uh, And I hope this piece is long enough because otherwise we're going to be doing a different color doctor because I think this is the last of my black silk. <laughs> this is it. If you want to help me purchase materials and... Uh, because I can keep tying flies. Check out my Etsy shop. Now, the other option I guess I could do is I could tie the body material in from the beginning. And, uh, and tie it, you know, um, just a single pass. I like a double pass because it helps smooth out any lumps. Um, but man, I am, this piece is a little short. Like I said, this is a leftover from a different project. Uh, just because, you know, I try not to waste. Well, we'll try to make this work. It'll be a little bit close. It's all right. Yeah. Now, I do want to tie the, the, the hackle in just a little bit. Uh, one more turn. Just because of the thickness of the floss. Um, I want to tie the hackle in closer to the bottom of the hook. So like towards six o'clock, so like six 30 or seven rather than my usual eight or nine, just because, um, again, the way the, the, the rib will pass under the, or, you know, in front of the, the, the hackle, uh, as I wind the rib, uh, it's going to, you know, add a little, it's a timing issue because, uh, you know, you want the, the, the hackle to start right behind the rib and not uh, be caught in, in under it in the wrong place. So. All right. We are just barely going to have enough black Loss here to wrap the entirety. Oh, man, that is like the ultimate in waste knot right there. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, tying classic Atlantic salmon flies, there can be a decent amount of wastage just because, you know, in order to tie five full turns of rib, you might have to pull off an extra inch of tinsel. Or, you know, in order to wrap down and back for an entire floss body, uh, you might need to pull off, you know, or you might accidentally 
pull off an extra you know four or five inches of floss or you know like these french legarden silks they come in three ply so you might only use one ply and you have two ply left not talking about toilet paper uh talking about the silk um we can talk about toilet paper later uh you know you might use one or two ply to wrap the body and you have one left and you just like well what do i do with it um i I don't have a very good way to store floss. I've been trying to come up with a couple of ways to store, you know, the odds and ends of floss. Um, but I try to save them because they're useful on later flies. You know, they can be used for tips or tags. And, you know, it's just good to try and reduce your waste, wasted materials because, you know, silks can be expensive in the end. Um, and, you know, feathers and fur, uh, are certainly uh, pretty expensive uh, when tying classic salmon flies. So I'm going to wrap first turn of rib, second turn of rib. Always, always, uh, you know, I try to shoot for five turns of rib every time. Um, space it out equally e e evenly that way um but like on a larger hook uh, you might end up with more turns of rib i always suggest that you shoot for an odd number of turns uh just because odd numbers look odd numbers can be visually more appealing than even numbers even numbers can look a little bit squat or uh you know uh subjectively unfinished um, I, I think, uh, just from a visual perspective, uh, odd numbers can be visually more, um, uh, complete looking, I guess is the way to look, say, say it. So just going to fold the hackle to the rear. Just fold it right on the fly on the on the in the vise. It's pretty easy. You just you know you grab the stem and you just pull the fibers to the rear and they'll usually do the work for you. Um, if it's a really you know top quality hackle, and then when you wrap, you know you wrap under, and then you just constantly pull it to the rear, and that actually helps settle the um, stem in the right place as well, or in the right orientation. Then, as always, finish it up right at the head, tying it right in next to where I tied in the rib. I'm gonna wax my thread just to bind down the fuzzies. You inevitably get. It just helps everything be a little bit more secure. All right, so then the shoulder hackle or the throat hackle um, is speckled. Our, um, guinea. Uh, now, when it says speckled guinea, it means. Um, so I'll show you the two different kinds of guinea feathers. There's spotted, which has single, singularly large uh, spots. And then there's speckled, which has large spots, but then in between all the large spots are much finer 
uh, spots or speckling. Uh, and this is typically what is meant um, in the throats of flies. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen spotted guinea or galena called for. Um, I could be wrong, but usually it's calling for speckled uh, guinea or galena. I'm just tied in by the tip, uh, like like a like any other hackle, um, and you only need a couple of turns of this. Uh, you'll also notice that I'm giving a lot of um, I'm not crowding the eye here, uh, and that's because again it's got a dubbed fur head, so you want to give plenty of space for that because um, that'll be nice and nice and prominent that way. I'm going to do maybe two, not more than three turns, but probably just two turns of the guinea. This is a very striking feather. Um, and also the, the actual working length or the amount of, the number of turns you get out of a feather is actually pretty small, uh, just because they tend to be smaller feathers, uh, particularly the speckled ones. Um, the spotted ones can be fairly large, and you can find some or speckled ones, but those are harder to find, and usually they're only suited for you know the larger hooks. Uh, on a on a three, a two or three out hook, yeah, about two turns is what you'll get. Just bind everything down, usual. Tease it out. You know, I don't. I'm not one to spend a whole lot of time folding the hackle. You know, down around the body. Um, I just. I don't. I don't see the need for it. I don't think it impacts tying the wing on uh, so much. So, you know, I, I don't have to do that. Um, so with that, this is the body of the uh, Black Doctor completed up to the shoulder hackle. Um, it's a nice Pretty straightforward body. The wing is a little bit more complicated. There are quite a few components, uh, but there's no cheeks or sides in the wing, which uh, I guess makes it a little bit easier in that regard. Um, but it is it is a more full list of materials. It includes things like peacock wing, uh, which can be difficult to tie in on larger hooks because most peacock wing feathers, I think I have a couple, most peacock wing feathers um, like this, usually will only tie out to like a one-aught hook. Uh, so if you're tying on a larger hook, uh, it can be difficult to incorporate the peacock wing into the, or peacock wing feather, the fibers, into the salmon fly wing uh, in a way that, you know, is visually appealing. Um, but I will show you my trick for that uh, next week when I finish the fly in the wing. Um, yeah, so uh, thanks for hanging out on this uh, uh, kind of makeup Sunday stream. Uh, I'm sorry if you if you went to the show yesterday. I'm sorry I, I wasn't there. Um, like I said, uh, we had a death in the family, and I had to travel for the funeral. Um, I was really glad I could be at the funeral. Um, yeah, uh, uh, that that's all I'll say about that. Uh, but it was nice, uh, and it was nice to see family as well. Uh, just wish it was under happier circumstances. Um, so yeah, so I think that's the end of my show season, uh, sadly. Um, you know, trout season's coming up. I think everybody's just getting, getting geared up for that. Uh, but I'll be back on a normal Saturday stream. I think I'm going to change my time for streaming on Saturdays to probably around three. Uh, so same time as today's stream started. Um, just going to try that for a little bit, uh, see if more people can make the stream. I know that like 11 o'clock in the morning isn't so great for people on the West Coast. So uh, a little bit later in the afternoon um, might, uh, might be better for people. So I'm going to try that for a little bit. Um, other than that, yeah, check me out on Instagram, just wondering dot Brad. Uh, again, um, when I hit 500 followers on my Instagram, I will run a giveaway, uh, competition, uh, 
there will be a little bit of a competition for it. Um, still figuring out what I would like that competition to be. Um, but I've got a few ideas. Uh, yeah. And if you want to support the stream, uh, support the channel, uh, purchase a fly that you've seen me tie or that you've seen on my Instagram, head, check out my Etsy shop, Studio 1213 on Etsy. And uh, all of the money that uh, I get from that will go towards improving a stream uh, and purchasing the materials that you see me tie with uh, just uh, to ensure that I can keep sharing this with you guys. I uh, hope your weekend went well. Um, stay safe, especially with the coronavirus out and about. Um, if you're working from home, you know, enjoy the, the opportunity, the change of pace and the, the change of scenery. Uh, if you have to go in, um, you know, be safe, wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, wipe down your surfaces, uh, uh, your work surfaces, uh, and just be really cautious. Um, for, you know, those who may not know, uh, I'm currently back in school, back in grad school for my master's of public health in epidemiology and the coronavirus outbreak has been, uh, kind of a case study for us. Um, kind of a live case study. And uh, it's really been interesting to to apply my schooling to the current situation. Um, you know, and one thing I would like to note is that the coronavirus, we've, we've been calling it the coronavirus outbreak, um, but really it is the correct name or the proper, proper name for the virus is SARS-CoV-2. Uh, so it's related to sars um, Cov just means coronavirus. Coronavirus is actually the name of the family of viruses. So um, it's not the species of virus, as you would say, but it's the family. So coronaviridae is the Latin name for coronaviruses. And included in that family of, of coronaviruses are things like rhinovirus, which causes the common uh, cold, um, but also more pathogenic viruses like MERS and SARS. Um, COVID-19 is just the name for the outbreak and the disease that were, that started, uh, you know, late last year. Um, but, you know, SARS-CoV-2 is the kind of proper epidemiologically proper name for the virus. Uh, so, you know, if you're out there, uh, if you have to go out, if you can't work from home, be safe. Um, I want everybody to be safe and uh, careful these in these times. Um, and, uh, you know, we're hoping that this, uh, this outbreak can be controlled, contained, and will uh, eventually wear itself out. Um, but, you know, I think some very well-educated people, some very knowledgeable people predict that, it, you know, it's going to get a little bit worse before it gets better. Uh, but if we all take the proper precautions, uh, we can make it uh, a lot less dangerous for ourselves. Um, so, yeah, with that, thanks for joining me. Um, again, sorry I wasn't at the show. Uh, but uh, we're back on the Saturday. From here on out, we'll, we're back on the Saturday stream schedule. And again, a little bit later time. So maybe like 2 or 3 in the afternoon instead of 11 in the morning. Uh, just to accommodate people who are uh, in different time zones. So, uh, yeah, take care, be safe, be healthy, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Bye.